This is part 36 of the Stuart Major beam engine rebuild. Here you see me hitting the beam engine with a hammer. There have been many times during the rebuild of this engine that I've wanted to take a larger hammer to it, but no, I've exercised some restraint and I'm using a very, very small hammer. And I'm only using that to very, very gently tap these cotter pins into place. These are tapered cotter pins. You can see how they work. One holds the bearing block in place and the other one holds the bit that holds the bearing block in place. A very simple invention and just like the full size. As always don't forget to lubricate the part that you're assembling because we don't want to damage the bearing surface when you first run the engine if you forget to do this. On this model engine all of the bearing assemblies are held in place by these pins as you can see. Here's the taper pin going into place that holds the whole thing together. And before I get lots of letters and emails and complaints, I don't normally use a hammer like this on an engine. I'm just showing how the thing is tapped into place using a hammer. The hammer blows are extremely light, and I must say that if you miss the cotter with the hammer and smash part of the engine, that is not recommended also. As I mentioned earlier, this method of holding bearing halves in place is used on full-size steam engines, and it's really effective. And you don't really need too much pressure, particularly on a model, for the cotters to hold in place. Where it does become a problem is if the model is very, very tiny, because you do not have enough surface area to generate the friction to hold the cotter pin in place. But as this is quite a large model engine, there's more than enough friction to hold the cotter pins in place without resorting to ultraviolence and damaging the components. If I was going to take up hammering cotter pins into model steam engines as a full time career, I would make a small brass hammer and a small brass counterweight for the other side, but instead I'm using a normal hammer and my adjustable spanner as a counterweight, which is fine for just illustrating what I'm doing on this video. No such hammer is needed for the next part, this is the water pump and I'm fitting the water pump ram. This just slides into the water pump and the other end fastens to this pin which fits across the beam, as you can see here. I can't really say too much about this, it's very self-explanatory. A bolt with a washer keeps the rod in place and the pin just slides into the beam. It's time now to fit the valve gear. The valve gear fits onto the eccentric, the eccentric fits onto the crankshaft and the first thing to do, as always, is lubricate the component before assembly. Even though this is a large engine by model steam engine standards, I still found it very fiddly putting the nuts onto the bolts that hold the eccentric strap in place on the sheave. And after only dropping about four or five BA nuts on the floor, I finally managed to get it to fit together. In the end, I managed to get the bottom nut onto the eccentric strap using a socket. With the eccentric finally fitted, I could turn my attention to the valve, making sure that the valve passed over the ports equidistantly just before top dead centre, and the same at bottom dead centre. This was achieved by moving the eccentric sheave that's why I drilled a hole in the eccentric strap, until I could get the valve to be precisely in the right place. Now it's time to fit the steam chest cover and the inlet piping. When I first dismantled this engine, I think I did it the wrong way. I removed the piping flange from the steam chest cover with a small spanner, whilst it was on the engine and it took forever. So what I'm doing here is assembling the steam pipe and the flange to the cover on the bench. Even though the steam chest cover already has a perfectly good gasket, as a belt and braces approach I'm applying some sealant, you've just seen me put some white stuff on the flange. This is a commercial sealant, not unlike Boss White. Boss White is a commercial linseed oil based sealant which used to be very popular with plumbers in the UK. In common with just about everything in this episode, it's very tedious, everything seems to be fiddly and conspiring against me. Here I'm fitting a nut to the steam chest cover. I've put a washer on first so that the nut doesn't chew up the paint on the cover. With this job patience is a virtue and under no circumstances if you're doing a job like this rush it and do not over tighten the nuts it would be disastrous to shear a stud at this stage. So that's the steam chest cover fitted very fiddly and this gets worse. This is the exhaust manifold and these nuts are even smaller. These are I think 7BA. I'm putting some compound on there, because there isn't a gasket required here, it's a very low pressure connection. After all that fiddling with nuts, I think it's time to use a bit more violence, and tap another taper cotter into place. 
This is on the Watts parallel motion. The tie rod bearings that hold the parallel motion to the main frame are actually mounted on these split bushes. Now I definitely do not want to drop these on the floor and lose them, so I'm sticking them in place as you can see with some grease, which also lubricates them as well. And then I put the tie rods in place, first at one side, and then the other. Here's the grease going in place, followed by the two split bearings, and then the tie rod, not forgetting to carefully tighten the bolts with a small spanner at each end which hold the bearings in place. Now it's time to check everything rotates OK, and indeed it does, although everything's a little bit tight. Nearly there now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.